Today we are going to continue our cleanup of our Simple Trader application. So one of the most glaring issues I've noticed is that for all of our forms, or all of our buttons specifically, we don't toggle whether they're enabled or disabled based on any of our form's contents. So for example, on this login form, we have username and password fields, and the user hasn't entered a password, but they can still log in. So what a user might expect is that they can only log in if they have entered a username and password. So what I would ideally want is this login button to only be enabled if the user has entered this data. So for example, right now it would be disabled, but if I type the password, it would become enabled. And we do this multiple places in our application. So for example, on the buy page, we can search for a stock even though we haven't entered anything. So right now, I would expect this to be disabled and then become enabled. And same thing with buying a stock. We have zero shares, but you really shouldn't be able to buy zero shares of a stock because that just doesn't make sense. You're not buying anything. So I really wouldn't want this buy button to become enabled until the number entered is greater than zero. And I believe the same thing for the sell page. Wouldn't want the sell button to become enabled unless the shares to sell was greater than zero. So that is the issue that we're going to address just to stay consistent with user expectations. I think especially for buying and selling stocks because you shouldn't really be able to buy or sell zero stocks. So let's begin toggling these buttons based on the user's input. So I think there's really two approaches we could take to this. We could either set up a binding to is enabled on all of our buttons for all of our forms. So here on the login view we might have a binding to can log in and this property on the view model would make sure the user has entered something for the username and password fields or we could manage whether or not the button is enabled in our commands. So actually I'm looking at the wrong button. I should be looking at the login button. So we could manage all of the button enabling and disabling in the login command that this button is binded to. So if we go to the login command, there's really nothing here, but we do inherit from async command base. And as you can see, we have a can execute function here. And this can execute function is required by the I command interface as we see right here. And our button grabs this value to determine if the button should be enabled or disabled. So right now, we actually disable the button if the command is executing, but we want more than that. So for example, for the login command, we want to disable the button if the login is executing, but also if the user hasn't entered a username and password. So what I want to do is actually override can execute in my login command. So I'm going to make this virtual on the async command base, and now in my login command, and eventually in all my commands, I can override can execute, and I'll call base can execute so that we can get that is executing flag. But I also only want to execute if the login view model can log in. So can log in is going to be a property that I implement on my login view model. So let's go to the login view model, and let's have a property for a boolean can log in, and it's just going to be a calculated property depending on the username and the password. So if the username is not null or empty, so there actually is a value, and if the password is not null or empty, so we got a value there, then the user can log in, and can log in is referenced in our login command for can execute, which means the login command can only execute if the user has entered a username and password, and the base can execute, so async command base can execute, which means the command isn't already executing. So everything should work, right? Let's check this out. And I'll put a breakpoint in can execute as well. All right, so we hit can execute because we have loaded this login view. And perfect, our login button is disabled. As you can see, it's got some opacity to it. Forgot I implemented that actually, but anyways, let's begin typing. So I put in my password and I have a username and password, but my button didn't become enabled. So why is that? Well, as you can see, we never hit this breakpoint again to reevaluate can execute. So we need to tell our UI to reevaluate can execute whenever can login changes. And we do that by raising can execute changed on our async command base. And of course, this event is on the I command interface, so the UI hooks into it. So we just need to raise this event, and of course, we do raise it whenever it is executing changes, but we also need to raise it whenever can login changes. So how are we going to do that? Well, conveniently, we can hook into our login view models property changed and subscribe to that with an event handler. Move that down here. And if 
the property name that changes is the name of the login view model can login property then we can raise can execute changed and the UI will re-grab this value so we're gonna raise can execute change the same way we do it in our async command base so I'm actually gonna move this to a method so extract that we'll call it one can execute changed just because this is a little bit cleaner than having to take the event and invoke it with all the event args that we don't really use and we'll make this protected so that we can use it in our login commands. So whenever the can login property changes, we'll call it on can execute changed, tell the UI to re-grab this value. But if you haven't noticed already, we're depending on a property change being raised for can login. But in our login view model, we never actually raise on property changed for can login because we never actually set this value. There's no setter for it, it's just a calculated value. But this calculated value depends on the username and password properties. So we can just raise on property changed for can login whenever those properties change. And now we will raise property changed for can login, we will get into this if block. So now we should successfully be toggling whether or not our button is enabled or disabled based on the user's input. So right now, button is disabled, begin typing, and there we go, it becomes enabled and I can log in. So basically all we have to do is take that same approach for the buy view model and the sell view model. So let's go ahead and do that. Which commands are we dealing with? Well I see right here this seems to be the search stock command and we only want that to be enabled if the user has input a stock that can be searched. So let's go ahead and set that up. And that is the search symbol command. So same thing, just override can execute. We'll still call the base, but now we'll take our view model and we'll check a property can search symbol. So if that's true, we can execute. And of course, we're gonna have to generate that property. And we're gonna be generating that on the I search symbol view model. So if we go to that, there we go, got the property. And now let's find that view model, which is the by view model. So set up that property and we can search for a symbol. If the symbol property is not null or empty and of course this property depends on the symbol property so on the symbol setter we're going to raise on property changed for can search symbol and since we raise that on property changed in our search symbol command we can subscribe to the view model property changed which we don't actually have because this interface i search symbol view model does not extend i notify property changed but i believe it should because it is a view model Basically all view models should implement I notify property changed. And this also isn't an issue because the by view model already implements that interface because it extends view model base. So now we have that event we can subscribe to. And if the property name is the name of the can search symbol property, then we can call one can execute changed, raise the can execute changed event, and the UI will get this value. So before testing this, I think I'm just gonna continue finishing the by view model. So the other command we have to worry about is the buy stock command. So same exact thing, override can execute, except this one is gonna be a little bit different with the way we set up our property on the buy view model. So we're gonna have a property for can buy stock. So we'll set that up here, can buy stock, another Boolean. And for this one, you can buy a stock if the shares to buy is greater than zero. So just a little bit different than checking if the string is null or empty like we were before, but really not that big of a difference. And again, this property depends on shares to buy, so we'll raise on property change for that property. And make sure we subscribe to property change, check the property name, raise can execute changed. So I went to test this and I forgot the cell view model also implements the I search symbol view model interface, and we haven't implemented the can search symbol property. And this situation is a little bit weird because the search symbol command actually isn't binded to a button in this case. We actually call the search symbol command whenever the selected asset changes in our combo box on the cell view. And since we call execute manually, we actually bypass can execute. So what I'm going to do is make sure the selected asset change command, which is my dependency property, but I bind the search symbol command on my cell view model to this property, so assume this is the search symbol command. But regardless, what I'm gonna do is make sure that command can execute, so just check that real quick, and if it can, then we will indeed execute it. But I do still need to implement 
the can search symbol property on this view model and we will implement it the same way so if the symbol is not null or empty then we can search for the symbol and we can execute the command so can search symbol depends on symbol and symbol depends on the selected asset property so I should actually be raising on property changed for symbol and for can search symbol so I actually forgot about raising on property change for symbol but I'm not sure we actually use that in any of our bindings I think that's simply used by commands so it might not be that big of an issue anyways I did want to test my by view make sure all those buttons are being enabled and disabled correctly so as you can see nothing entered into this search symbol text box but as we enter some kind of value we can search so we will search and as you can see the shares to buy is zero so of course we can't buy but if we make it something like two then we can buy and now we just have to go through and fix up this final button on the sell view. Make sure this is disabled if the shares to sell is zero. So we can sell a stock if the shares to sell is greater than zero. Let's raise on property change for that. We can execute the sell stock command if the view model can sell stocks and the base can execute so the command isn't already executing. And we need to just raise can execute changed whenever the can sell stock property changes on the view model. And of course we subscribe to property change for that as well. So there we go, the sell button is disabled. So if I change this to something like two, we can sell and we will sell and all is good. So hopefully you all get the gist of dealing with can execute on commands. I've showed off multiple examples here. I still have to do the register command, I forgot about that, but I'll do that off camera. All right, so I actually do wanna show off the register command real quick. So same kind of thing in the command, subscribing to property changed on the view model, checking a can register, property on the view model as well and raising can execute change whenever that property changes and then my property implementation on the view model just checking if any of the input fields are null or empty and if none of them are then we can register and then I simply raise on property changed for can register in all of the depending properties for this property so for email username password and confirm password and I just wanted to show this one off because this is probably the biggest form that we have but pretty much the same kind of setup applies here as well. And I think this is definitely a solid improvement for our application. So rather than being able to click these buttons without entering all the information and having something fail, instead we just disable the button. Although maybe it would have been cool to have this button always enabled and when you click it, it does like field by field validation. So looking back, that's another thing that could be useful as well. But I also feel comfortable with just disabling the button. So if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.